Hi folks and welcome to this reflection coming from Killin Parish Mans. I came across a song uh, I knew many years ago by one of my favourite bands when I was younger uh, called Ten Years After, a rock band with the legendary lead guitarist Alvin Lee. And the lyric, uh, one of the lyrics in the song says this, I'd love to change the world, but I don't know what to do. So I'll just leave it up to you. I did notice on the, the site that there were, and the comments section, uh, that somebody had written that this song was so apt for today. And of course, that was a few years ago, uh, not as old as the song itself, um, but certainly uh, many people today would think of these lyrics. I want, I'd love to change the world. Well, who wouldn't? There's a lot that's wrong. But I don't know what to do. Well, we're all in the same camp, aren't we? So I'll just leave it up to you. Yes, somebody somehow will fix it. We can be forgiven for realising or thinking that the end is nigh, to use the word from the old billboard, or a, a line from Dad's Army, we're all doomed. If we watch the news, it's crisis laid upon crisis. And it's not so much that the, the media milk these things, they seem to wallow in it. So it's almost as like, it's almost like we've never been at such a terrible situation. The life has never been so bad. But a historical perspective helps us here. When I think of what my grandparents went through, my grandfather fighting in the First World War and all that that entailed. Then the Spanish flu, which was far more deadly than COVID after that. But they came through it. And then the, all the other momentous events in the 20th century makes the 21st century seem rather tame. Now, I'm not in any way trying to say that there are not crises at the moment and that people are struggling and will continue to struggle. That's real, but perspective is required here. The lesson of history is this, this too will pass. We will come through this. But moving on, I want to look at a passage in scripture and it's Mark chapter 13. As he was leaving the temple, one of the disciples said to him, look teacher, what massive stones. What magnificent buildings! Do you see all these great buildings? replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign? that they are all about to be fulfilled. Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of the birth pains. Cheery stuff. Now, most scholars accept that this refers to the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70, 40 years after the time of Jesus. And it's interesting that there are ancient authors who refer to various wars throughout the, the, the Roman Empire at that time. There's mention of famines and, of course, earthquakes. And then the catastrophic destruction of Jerusalem and the temple was destroyed, that great temple that the disciples were in awe of. It, too, had its time, but it came down. But that, too, passed. And the story of the Christian church emerging out of all of that was an incredible story. For the Bible, every ending has a new beginning. And as we go through the biblical story, that's the way it is. 
So I don't deny that there are warning signals for us today regarding the various crises, including uh, global warming and, of course, the issues to do with poverty. Uh, I accept all of that. But remember, the message of Jesus was in the midst of all of this. So the Jesus then is the Jesus now for us. We do not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. God will carry us through these times if we're prepared to trust him. Now, the interesting thing about the scriptures is they're far from boring. The gospel is not boring. Jesus arrived on the scene. Now, I just read from Mark 13, but in Mark 1, verse 15, Jesus begins his ministry by saying this, the time is fulfilled or the time is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. And the word there in the Greek for repent means to change direction. In other words, it was a prophetic message to people. Look, this is a momentous time. It's a time to get right with God. And that's what he was saying right here in Jerusalem, that all the grandeur of that temple was going to end. They were at a, a pivotal point. They were at a, a, a point where decisions had to be made. And that Jesus still challenges us today. Now there's two words in Greek for time. One is chronos, from which we get the English word chronology. And we think of time on a line. But there's kairos, and that means an appointed time, a special time. Like say, it's harvest time, or it's Christmas time, or, or even it's Sunday, because we, we only meet for one hour every week on a Sunday. So the rest of the week is like Kronos, and then there's this appointed time that's special. And the Kairos time was a time, a moment, a moment in time that was really important. It was a time for decision. It was a time for action. And God calls us to be roused from our sleepwalking. Because unfortunately, the Christian church so often has been sleepwalking through time. We take so many things for granted. And maybe the current crisis in our churches throughout the land, the current crisis in our nation and in our society, and perhaps even in our personal circumstances. In the moment, these moments of crisis, we should listen for the word of God, the God of hope, the God who's in the midst of all that turmoil, asking for us to make a decision, to make a commitment, and to trust him. God has carried us thus far. He will continue to carry us in the future. So the word of hope is there, as well as the word of challenge. And that's often the case in scriptures. God gives us a challenge. He cuts to the core of all the problems and all the issues and what's wrong with the human heart and the human condition. But alongside that is an offer of hope for those who are prepared to seize it. But we can't seize it unless we're aware of it. And it means our hearts have to be open to the living God. And Jesus Christ points us to these things. Now, reading these words, there's nothing boring about the Bible. That moment of Jesus, you could just sense the tension and that's true of all scriptures. Somehow and in some way, we've tamed the Bible. We've tamed the faith. We've even tried to tame God. So in other words, he's there for us when we need him. But the, the faith is much more than that. God calls us to be a part of a community that's alive in him with a message for the world. And my goodness, how the world needs to hear this message of hope at this time. So let's get on board. Let's hear this prophetic word. Let's respond to the crisis of crisis of faith as well, indeed, within the church, within our nation. And all the political uh, machinations and all the economic problems. Respond to that with an, a, a sense that we will do our best 
to make things different, to do things differently, and to be a beacon of hope in this world. That's what God calls us to. That is, of course, if we're listening. May God help us to reflect on these things this coming week. Once again, thank you for watching and listening. God be with you. Amen.